Hey everybody, thank you for coming back. Muse by Muse, we got another great episode. Another great episode of Blackwater Lane is a movie that's coming out this Friday. We got the director Jeff Celitano. Uh, sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> it's early morning. Not the first here. time. Not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, at um, least you didn't call me cilantro. Well, yeah. I mean, then I got issues. Then my European side of the family is going to be very pissed at me. <laughs> um, but n- great movie. Very much a thriller. And once I saw that English manner, I was like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to probably wreck me. But um, what was it about this film and putting that style? Because it has such a unique style and it's something different than what I've seen in the past. Yeah. What, thank you for that. I mean, that, that makes me feel really, that made my day, actually. Um, I like movies like this back in the day, you know, the Hitchcockian kind of films, these th- psychological thrillers where you're trying to figure it out all the time. And I don't think they get made that much anymore. You know, they, everybody wants all this gore and all this kind of stuff. I, I love the idea of this movie from the moment I read the script because I said, this is like the movies of the past that were so strong and so good. Um, you know, the house on haunting Hill or any of these kind of movies. And so I like the straightforwardness of it. I didn't, I thought that you can still terrify people without all that other stuff and just go for the pure psychological part of it. And that was what attracted me to it. Yeah. And see, that's what I like about it. There's certain shots that I'm looking at the film and I'm like, Oh shoot, that reminds me of the Omen. Yes. The like Omen just... was a, one of the movies I l- watched a lot before I made it. Because that was the movie that scared me the most as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's um, Mia was The Shining. The Shining scared me like Shining was crazy, terrifying. But that's the thing. It's like you don't see movies like this anymore, where it's more like you said. It's a lot of gore, a lot of scares right at you. This is this one makes you think the whole time. Right. You don't know where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing I do want to touch upon too is the cast. What a great cast you're able to put together for this film. Uh, please tell me, give me a little insight about that. Um, so we started casting and we were looking for the lead girl. Um, there was another actress, uh, involved that dropped out and, um, we had to find the lead. And so, um, I guess, uh, one of our producers, Liz Fowler brought up Minka Kelly and I always liked Minka from Friday night lights. And I thought, wow, she's pretty strong. She's beautiful, but she can, she's a really strong actor. So I had a meeting with her on the phone and I, I basically just tested her. I said, you know, Minka, I go, you're going to be crying your eyes out through most of the movie. And it's a woman having a nervous breakdown, supposedly. So you're going to have to go through that and portray that truthfully. Cause my, my idea of acting is, you know, looking through the keyhole of someone's house and watching life go on as it really would mm-hmm. in any capacity, Ter- if you're terrified, terrified, or you're, you're angry, you're sad, you're happy. Whatever that is, it's got to be real to the audience so they don't relate to it. So I said, you have to be so deeply immersed in this character. You're going to be probably in the hospital after this is over for real. And she said, I'm not scared at all. Um, My emotional range is very huge. I relate to this story in many ways um, from stuff I've been through. And she started getting emotional during the interview. And I thought, wow, this girl gets it. And I was hooked, you know, and then we hired her and then and then the Maggie Grace idea came up and I thought she's powerful. She's a great force to be reckoned with. She's a perfect uh, partner for Minka to be her best friend. And then Dermot Mulroney came up and I love, I've always loved Dermot. And as soon as he and I met on the phone uh, on a call, um, I was, I loved him. I mean, we just got along from the moment I met him. We were kind of, we were kind of brothers as soon as I met him in brothers in arms, you know? Yeah, definitely. And it's such a strong cast. They do some great work in this film. Uh, but I do want to mention your cinematographer as well. What a great job he did, especially with the shot selection, the color selections, and the, the, with the color palette. Um, please tell us about a little bit about your cinematographer as well. Well, Felix um, Felix lives in Germany. He's German. Uh, we were looking for a DP out of Europe because we felt it wanted, I wanted a European look to it you know, that independent feel, but still be big kind of tentpole looking movie. And I felt he could achieve that. He had just done this. uh, uh, He done a, he did a crazy um, series there called Oktoberfest with a K the bloody fest. I mean, it's about an Oktoberfest where it's just a massacre, but it's all period in the, like the 1800s. And he did a thing where what really hooked me 
was he has a scene where a drone comes down into this huge like kind of carnival and people are fire breathing and things like that and all of a sudden the drone just keeps going and walking through the crowd and talk goes up to people's faces and i said how in the heck did you do that shot he said that drone came down and my grip grabbed it and put and just we turned the motor off and he just used it as a camera and i was like that's unbelievable and that and those shots were big i mean it was a pretty big series i mean it was like seven million dollars an episode or mm -hmm. or some crazy thing or maybe seven million dollars for the whole um series they did but it was an expensive show and he did beautiful beautiful job with it not to mention he's one of the sweetest people you ever want to work with he will work tirelessly into the night um on weekends when we had off we felt we needed some other stuff of the house and stuff and he's like jeff let's just grab the camera and go you and me i said but you're off work today i can't pay you for that and he said you don't have to pay me let's just go let's make the movie great mm -hmm. that was his attitude all the time he didn't care about how much money he was making he cared about i mean he cares about making money obviously but he did he wasn't his priority his priority was making every shot great and and you see it when you're watching the movie you see it you see yeah. that like there's decisions that i'm just looking i'm just like wow that's a really cool shot it's really different something mm -hmm. i haven't seen especially using the low light the way he did oh yeah just awesome great work of he that. had this weird little camera that had just come out a month before it was like a mini steady cam mm -hmm. and if you know if you see the opening of the movie where he goes through the house he's running with that thing and it's not even moving and he's got it in one little hand so it does the job of the big apparatus that we use which we did use too mm -hmm. but that little steady cam thing made the movie different yeah and putting all this together and like now that now that we're getting closer to release what are you hoping people are going to take out of the film? Because it's just such a, as we're getting into that now, summer seems to be that transition from a summer movie season to a horror season now. Right. What are you hoping people get out of the movie? I just hope they really enjoy it and are entertained by what I went set out to do was basically make a really scary movie, but with a really solid story with great characters and they don't feel like they wasted one minute of their time. That's that's what I want people to walk away with. I just want entertainment for them. Mm -hmm. I'm like I said, I've said it many times. There's certain movies I do that are different where it educates people or changes their lives. You know, I'd done a movie called The Hill last year with Dennis Quaid that I, I've gotten letters by the thousands of people that's changed their lives. Like you wouldn't expect it, but it happened. And that changed my way of thinking about film. But this movie was never set out to, you know, um, be anything other than a great, scary, entertaining movie that you can watch with your your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your family and be terrified and walk out and go, wow, that was an experience. That's all I care about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, go great... Disneyland, you go to Disneyland and you come out of that park, you want to look at everybody and go, that was a great day. You know, mm -hmm. that's all I care about with this film. That was a really good movie. And I'm glad I went. Yeah, and I'm glad that Lionsgate is releasing it in theaters and on demand, not just because this is a theater movie. This is yeah, a going to the too. theater type of movie. But as you know, the, the theatrical world is different today. Mm -hmm. It's changing. The landscape's changing every day. Yeah. And um, we're really lucky that we got it in theaters and that people believed in it enough, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I got to mention, because Lionsgate really does, when they when they decide on distributing certain films, they do a great job in distributing their movies. Uh, and really try to get them into theaters first and then secondary markets afterwards. What was it like working with them to be able to get this into theaters? Um, really great. I mean they they've been they've been really informative about everything they're doing. They keep me updated on everything. They've got a lot of press going on in the film. Seems that a lot of people really like it. I think they're really behind it. They really see the potential. Yeah, I, I, I agree, because I, I think this film is going to do gangbusters, especially in a time where we don't have right now. There's really not much when it comes to horror. So I yeah. think it's a great, great uh, film to lead it off and get everything going. But uh, okay. before I let you go, I want to talk to you about just on the directing side in general and the changes. Uh, we talked to somebody yesterday who actually used a, an iPhone 15 to shoot a short film. And it looks like the barrier of entry for a lot of kids who want to be like yourself, a director, is starting to get more realistic into because you have some a camera in your pocket. 
what do you what can you tell these younger kids who want to be directors who want to go do that who who that's all they could afford is to do a phone but they got a great story and they want to use that to kick off their career i would tell them that if you want to do something you have to be passionate about it and love it and then just do it there are no rules in this business uh nobody you can be told a million different things and take away with what you want from that experience of talking to somebody about what they've gone through but until you've gone through it yourself you don't know i i meet a lot of writers that go yeah i'm a writer and i said what have you written uh well i wrote this first part of a film it's really good i go did you finish it no you're not a writer you got to finish it and so if a kid's sitting out with his iphone he wants to make a film he should get some advice i feel like those kids should go work on movie sets as pas production assistants and watch the process because they'll learn a lot just from sitting back and watching from the, you know, from the stands. But um, I think if, you know, my best message to give to them, if you're passionate about something, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Just go do it. Yeah. You'll never know till you do it. You never know until you open that door. If there's a cliff on the other side or there's a pathway to your success in life. I mean, I always tell people, if you don't open the door, you don't know what's on the other side. As cliche as that sounds, it's how I live my life. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeff, you made a great film in Blackwater Lane. Thank you so much for stopping with us.